Now move on to a market discussion segment and on this segment we will be focusing on hard science and what exactly is hard science and how it could contribute to the economy and to do the honours we have with us the head of John Keel's research Dr. Mudita Sinaratyapal. Good evening to you doctor. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning that we will be talking about hard science, I think now when we refer to the term hard science, people might be wondering what exactly is hard science. So what is hard science in a layman's point of view and what is the difference of hard science and the general use of innovation? All right. So, nice. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Nice uh, meeting you here. Uh, Hard science is a colloquial term which is used to ge generally describe uh, natural and physical sciences which we all know, uh, I think, and a lot of people in Sri Lanka actually study also. Uh, so general innovation is an idea becoming a product, service or a business uh, 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 to create new and uh, new in, uh, income or profits. But uh, hard science innovation is different from that because it's going to be based on scientific research where uh, scientific rigor is going to go into from an idea to be becoming a product. There is a long process of research to conversion into development to a product to a, then to market. So it's a longer process but it is based on science. So this is time consuming? This is definitely time consuming, yes. Right, so that's uh, the basic understanding between hard science and uh, general use of innovation. So you need a lot of skills and education for hard science, isn't it? Uh, yes and no, because uh, nothing can be done by just by scientists. Uh, th this is a process which involves a lot of people, but there is a, a Sri Lanka uh, uh, qualification uh, platform where we, you can go and kind of look at what kind of is, uh, SL QF level, Q level you need for uh, different aspects of innovation in science. For example, it, there are 10 levels, uh, 7, 8, 9 is where people who uh, direct the research like from idea to when you are doing experiments and things like that, how do you do that and discussions and all these reviews and all these things can be done by people who have learned to up to about that level. Usually it's a master's degree or a PhD. Then uh, six, seven is usually a BSc degree or a postgraduate diploma where those are the people who can actually work in the lab and do general day-to-day -day things. But that doesn't mean all the others are excluded because anything to be run efficiently, all these different levels of education is needed. But uh, definitely the skills are needed when you are doing the uh, very difficult science. Exactly, because the name says it all, it's hard exactly. science. So what are the necessary conditions for hard science innovations? Anything in particular? So, when I said earlier, innovation uh, has to become a reality. Just an idea is not, I mean, you can do theoretical studies of some science, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to create any economic impact. Uh, to for you to create some kind of economic impact, it has to go to market. So in this process, uh, um, you need uh, uh, different types of uh, environment. For example, you definitely need to have skills. Uh, you need to have funding. Also, you need to have patience. Uh, the fourth one, I would say... Patience would be because it's time consuming. It is, yeah, definitely. And patience not only from the scientist side, even the manager's side, right? But uh, something which is really necessary is the collaboration between the academia and the industry so that uh, after the product is developed, it has to go. Uh, if you ask me which is the harder part, for I, because I'm involved in both sides, commercializing is harder, way harder than Convincing science. people to understand exactly. what this is. Because this is not something uh, which was existing in the world. So if I come and try to sell you some imagination, uh, uh, convincing you to believe in what I believe in, with you without knowing whether this is actually going to work, whether this is going to work in the market, all these things is difficult. Exactly. And we spoke of 
time being a concerning factor when it comes to innovations of this sort. Right. So what is the time frame we are looking at? So let me take an example and ex explain this. Uh, I think uh, most of you have heard of uh, Human uh, Genome Project, which took 15 years from 1988 to 2003. U.S. government invested about 3.8 billion uh, U.S. dollars for this project over the 15 years. But so 15 years and that much of money, but it created nearly 800 billion dollars of economic impact. Actually, it created 244 billion uh, personal income, billion dollars of personal income. So over the 15 years, it created a lot of uh, jobs. Uh, I think some million job years was created. So if you um, if you want to find out this information, this study was done about the Human Genome Project because when this was started, there was a lot of uh, talk about why we are investing this much of money in all these time-consuming research. But now, if you look at even the recent COVID uh, injections or vaccines are based on the knowledge which came out of that project. Exactly, but although this is time consuming, you need someone who could invest in you to believe in you. Exactly. So you have to convince at least one person to start on this hard science innovation you're right. looking at. So uh, can we have a few examples of the hard science? Now you mentioned a massive one. Right. So can we have an ex a few examples of maybe a small scale innovation which we can look at in terms of hard science and do we have the capability of doing that as well in Sri Lanka? All right. So uh, one thing I look at uh, when even after coming back to Sri Lanka one thing I really realize is we have enormous pool of talent uh, but we haven't done enough to keep that talent in the country. Uh, I'm not saying everybody who get a degree goes uh, overseas but we lose very talented people to other countries. If you go to Western countries, even now Asian countries, there are a lot of Sri Lankans working in those uh, different Is this because of the income they get, the uh, revenue? I, maybe one factor is that here there are no opportunities also. So if you look at the biotechnology field, there are a lot of biotechnology graduates. I mean, personally, I get uh, at least one TV per month uh, I, I have a lot of collection of a lot of biotechnology CVs, but I can't give them jobs, right? But, but, and also, there are not enough uh, research opportunities in Sri Lanka. Uh, we have qualified people, but I think we have to create more opportunities for them to uh, express their creative science side in a lab. How can this be done? How can we motivate people to, obviously this is not for the people who want to learn hard science, but for the people who would give them opportunities. Okay, so uh, let me give you a few examples. Uh, South Korea invest about 4.3% of their GDP in research and development. Ethiopia invest about 0.6%. Sri Lanka invest only about 0.1%. This data is available in, on, on the UNESCO website. Anybody can go and look at. Uh, we have about 98 scientists per million people. Uh, Ethiopia has only 44. So even though they have, they don't have enough people. They invest a lot more from from their GDP. So this is where I think we need to look at the larger picture of how these things can create an impact on Sri Lankan economy. We have resources which we, which we haven't added value and we have uh, uh, even the ocean resor resources around Sri Lanka where we can add an enormous amount of value for the country. So we've come towards the latter part of this segment, Doctor. So as a final, um, what would you like to tell the youth out there because they are considered the future of every country right. so the future has to actually get interested in getting into hard science so if they figure out that there's very less opportunity yeah, in not. the country you won't see them entering yeah. okay so all this discussion is not to discourage them I, I think more people should get into science because it's the future in the next 10 years there's going to be a lot of science coming in your, in your way we are actually in the middle of fourth industrial revolution where automation is going to be the key so uh, science needs a lot of people. Uh, I, I can tell 
uh, one example when I graduated from the university versus now there is a development but my point is we can do lots more to push this to a the right direction. Exactly so that's uh, some words of advice for the budding scientists out there who wants to come up with new innovations and this certainly would contribute to the economy as well in a big way on the long run. Yeah. So with that, it's time for us to wind up this segment as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Madhita Senaratyapa, for being a part of our show. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much. And with that, it's time for us to wrap up Business Today for you this evening. Thank you for joining. Take